back at it again and yes we've gone and done did it we're here at the second city of haiti cop aisian o cop and this view oh magnificent it's only a a taste a nibble a a pinch of what we have to offer you from the places the people the the, the food the restaurants the hotels we're showing you as much as we can in a short episode but it won't be enough it won't be enough <laughs> so we're gonna have a whole series, episode after episode, breaking down. Oh, cop, man, I, I, we, sh we were only here for a week. I, we seriously, seriously should have been here for an entire month just to capture a genuine fraction of what uh, is here. But at the end of the day, we're gonna capture what is at the heart of what makes OCOP so special, and that is what? It's the people. The people make this city, and quite frankly, gives the whole country hope, but makes OCOP so special. And, and we're making sure to capture them, their activities, their businesses, their programs, and how they're pushing forward through, quite frankly, difficult times for Haiti. So guys, I want you to smash that subscribe button. If you're first time you're watching us, make sure you hit that notification button, like, share the video, check out the other episodes coming in this series. And guys, we're just getting started. Don't move. Here we go. to be one of my favorite cities, mainly because of the history. The history here oozes off of every single corner, street, building that exists here. And right behind me, of course, is the church, which has been here since its inception. One thing that has to be understood when it comes to Okap is the fact that even though we call it the second city, in actuality, it's really the first city. <laughs> Founded in 1670, it's been a part of Haiti and Haiti's history ever since. It's exchanged hands a few times between the French uh, and Haiti, of course, but one of the most important uh, battles, one of the important fights, which we'll visit as well, happened here. So central, in fact, that Cap Haitian served as the capital of Haiti between different administrations uh, going back from the very start of when Haiti became Haiti. The most important of which is when Henry Christophe called the northern half of Haiti his kingdom <laughs> and Okap served as the central point for that administration. Even in the current era, Okap still serves a, a incredibly pivotal role in the touristic side of Haiti. It, it really is, you know, Okap is the ambassador of the country where there's so much tourism, so much potential here. It, it, it's, it's just, it, it almost hurts. <laughs> it almost hurts, really, because of all the potential you see, and yet it's just not utilized. And there's a lot of TLC this city needs before, really, it can stand on its own internationally. But nonetheless, I, it's a pleasure to be here. It's a pleasure to meet the folks, meet the people. It's a pleasure to see the life that pulsates here and the history that's still being made. Because I can tell you, I have a sneaking suspicion the Haiti that turns around, the Haiti that becomes uh, the Haiti that we all deserve. Sneaking suspicion, a big part of it is gonna come from Cap Haitien. No trip is complete without coming to the monument of Bataille de Frechie, right? And this is the monument that, that symbolizes physically the incredible victory we had in 18 November, 1803, against the French and ultimately the nail in the coffin that kicked out the French from the island and started the, the nation of Haiti. We're in the space here, it's, it's a beautiful space. We have folks who are enjoying uh, uh, an afternoon in the shade, right? It's clean, 
the energy is, is, is appropriate for the city. And I can tell you, coming here, spending a few hours, you know, it's sucking up the energy, the revolutionary energy that exists here. And again, it's something that you just have to do. In one of our top favorite restaurants in Ocap, in Cap Baizia, and that is Cap Deli. It's one of my spots that, listen, when it comes to variety, quality, food, taste, and price, it's gonna be hard to beat, right? The ambiance is A1, as, as you'll find anywhere else you could imagine, but then on top of that, the customer service is on point, right? What we have in front of us here, we have a platter, a platter that has some of their best offerings from chicken wings to grill to some kiwi on the plate. We got some akra, uh, and we got, of course, you gotta have, gotta have grill and some, and some tasso as well, some goat, right? And then we have so another thing you can get here that's, that's top notch, you have pizza, two slices, and of course they have an incredible offering of alcoholic drinks. There's one of their cocktails here. And I, we're gonna chow down, not much to say. Uh, I, I just I cannot encourage you enough. You're coming, when you're coming to Okap, make sure one of your evenings, you grab a menu and you sit and you enjoy. And then, by the way, tell them Sujanti sent you. <laughs> I'm Christina. I'm assistant manager at Cat Daily. I've been working for five years. I like the way all the waitress welcome the customers, take care of them. We take pleasure, we are satisfied with the clients. We take pleasure, we have a client good service. We assure that the clients are always there. And we always work to give them a better performance. So we have a special thing here. It's Creole Platter. Creole Fritaille Platter. Creole Platter. Creole Fritaille Platter. Dani Wabjoy, chicken wings, poulet barbecue, banane, grillo, tasso, dans un seul plateau. Il est vraiment, vraiment, vraiment délicieux. So, so we got to do a taste test. Got to do a taste test in front of you. This is their kiwi. Oh, top notch. What's nice about this, it's not that greasy, you know? And the kiwi you have made is greasy. They put too much stuff in it. It doesn't meat lightly touched with grease, with some oil, I'm sorry, and fantastic, right? We also have the wings here, barbecue wings. It, first off, it looks fantastic. You know, it has parsley on it and it breaks apart. Mm. Phenomenal, phenomenal wings. Mm. I'm gonna kill this. You know, you gotta have your bun on. In Haiti, you gotta have your bun on. Mm. Perfection. You have your akka. Hands down, one of the top five places in all of Aden for akka. And finally, of course, a quick little piece of the tasso. Mm. Phenomenal. Again, guys, come check out Cap Deli. So we're going up. So it's already off. I know what the deal is. And, uh, whew. No joke, gonna do some pounds. The rest of the crew is with horses. I know better because last time, the horse, Totally ruined my body. The shocks going up and especially going down. Like now, nah, if I ever do this again, we're gonna ride up as far as we can with cars, and then, and then walk the rest of the way. So, here we go, walking. Let's go. So yeah, 
Yeah, right, right at the top. Right at the top is the Citadel. You can see from down here. We still got a ways to go, but uh, you know what? I think it's worth the, the sweat <laughs> and effort. Because here's the thing, I just think about how much my ancestors put into this and the work and effort they put into this. They say nothing, it's easy work. As Floyd Mayweather always say, easy money, easy work, let's go. So yeah, we're about to get inside. We just got it to the, the legit official entrance. And uh, you know, water's in hand, barbecue's in hand. Let's go explore this bad boy, come on. The very first building you'll come across uh, as soon as you enter the official complex is this building here. And this used to be the actual hospital, the infirmary uh, for the entire building. Right there. And so at, at the, on the, one of the sides of the buildings, you'll see another fort uh, in, in, the, in the shooting distance, more or less, of this fort. And Henry's in di uh, ambition was to have a series of forts one dominoed against the other that could serve as a, a signal when the French are here that from here all the way to ultimately the original capital which was Marche de Saline uh, near Atibonit could be alerted to the presence of uh, the French and on top of that be able to fight them you know in this secession. I mean there was a plan in place to ensure that we never ever became a vassal of the French again and this fort was really the the tip of the sword, right? As, as great as it was, as magnificent as it was, only, only the tip of the sword in terms of the defense that was envisioned and, and execute, started to be executed on by Dessalines and, and Henry Christophe. So we made it. We are at the epicenter, the very heart of the Citadel. This is the donut, as you can say, of, of the Citadel. And uh, there's cannons that are aligned, all ready to go. There's different things. Actually, there's a tomb that is right behind us there for the primary supervisor, who was the brother-in-law, actually, of Henry Christophe. You know, these are different officer quarters that existed here in, in, the, in the center. And, and again, you can see, we'll, we'll head over to the very edge corner where you can you know, officially where there was a, a postman watchman who uh, would watch 24-7 waiting for the French to come uh, for that action. <laughs> So we're legitimately really at the tip top. You know, this is a this is a high, particularly I think the highest point within the castle that we have access to officially. And uh, and then from here, as I as you can see, you can see the the uh, bay uh, of Okap all the way in the distance there, uh, looking right dead at you. And so imagine if the French were to come and try to um, reclaim what they think is theirs, they're already. They were ready, and from this point, the vantage point, you can see it all, you know, days in advance and you do your preparations. We are here, Saint Souci Palace. This is a historic site, of course. This is the residence of Henry Christophe and his wife. Uh, this is where truly they would lay their heads in between building fantastic palaces and administering the entire north of Haiti. And it is uh, truly, you can feel the essence, the vibration of uh, what was here and still coming here. It's still something of inspiration. And I gotta tell you, you cannot come to Oka without visiting this fantastic spot, right? So this place was uh, destroyed by an earthquake in 18, 18, 18, in the early 1800s. And uh, across the way, there was a fantastic uh, chapel that was uh, damaged heavily by a fire that occurred uh, relatively recently, about a year to two years ago. 
Uh, but nonetheless, you, uh, there's still been some rehab, some, some, a little bit of work done in terms of getting this place clean and getting this place uh, structured with staff to make sure uh, things uh, do have a sense of order. I, I do recommend coming here. Again, it's, it's, it's for historical importance, coming here, touching the soil, seeing what was here. Again, it's, it's absolutely inspirational. And you just got to make sure you come. And after a long day in the Citadel and in Sans Souci, you get a chance to consume at Laku Lakai, where you order before. Before you head out, you order. And you know that when you come down, you have a fantastic meal waiting for you. And a meal is always shared much better when you're with good friends and family. And this is friends and family. So, in, so make sure Laku Lakai is a place you come. Fantastic food, I always recommend it. Price side, eh, eh, but it's certainly worth the value <laughs> that you're getting. All right, bon appetit. Merci beaucoup. This is the chef that uh, threw threw down for us here at Lakai Restaurant. Again, I'm telling you, a good idea is to call ahead. But nonetheless, uh, even if you forget or somehow happens, you just, oh yeah, Chris, she said, there's a restaurant around here. Make sure you come before you go up. And, and this lovely, beautiful woman here will prepare one of the best things you ever put in your stomach, ever. <laughs> Merci beaucoup. Merci aussi. <laughs> There is no coming to Okap without hitting the beaches. And the very first place up is Kadgas Beach. As you can see, it's it's a pretty, in terms of length, small beach, but it's something that has incredible nuance to it, incredible spice to it. Like there's a whole there's a whole vibe going on right now. We've been here for a little bit, and man, I, I'm enjoying this. And of course, while you're here, you can hit one of those folks up, and they'll get you some crabs, some lobsters, some lumbi, lumbi. Excuse me, <laughs> don't, don't don't butcher me for saying lumbi wrong. For Lumbee and and man the whole the whole the whole nine it's really it's really a vibe and I gotta tell you if you you know you cannot come to Okap without hitting the beach and again this it has to be one of them. And of course this beach brings all the locals and superstars to it and there is no bigger superstar than Tonton Bisha, the yes. one and only. <laughs> First thing to know. I'm Tonton Bichard, Daniel Fizeme, my real name, and I'm from Cape Haitian. Cape Haitian native, guys. Now, <laughs> I'm in my city. Nice. So, welcome to you guys. So, I'm waiting for your questions. Now, now, no, this beach, is it one of your favorites? Is it after Ila? I know there's a lot of different beaches, but where does Cadillac Beach rank for uh, you? I think uh, Cadillac Beach is the third one. Uh -huh. Because we can say, First of all, Labadi and the Maki Paradise and Karas is the third one. The third one. Yeah. Now my question is, have you come to Okap often? And, and, and what's your favorite part of Okap in general? Often, often, often. But I'm live I'm living for now in Portland. Um by circumstance, you know? Mm -hmm. So um, I'm planning to to go definitely back to my city because Capetian is very, very, very special, as you can see. Mm -hmm. Look at the nature, mm -hmm. look at the people, look at the culture. Mm -hmm. uh, it's unique. It is unique. And that's one of the first things I was asking. What makes, what is the, I mean, what's the, what makes so, so unique? What's that secret sauce? Is it the people? Is it the air? Is it the? The food. The food. <laughs> And the woman, <laughs> the women. Well, I don't know. I'm, I'm, I don't know, honey. I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> but uh, my wife is from Lekai, but uh, so I can say Capetian is 
one of the best. So in short, here if, direct from Toto Pisa, the one and only, when you're thinking about Haiti, think Okap. Okap. First of all, <laughs> Okap and then Okai, Jack Mel, and blah 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 blah. But Kepeishan is the first. And guys, if you don't know Toto Bisha, Toto Bisha, give, give me your IG, give me your Facebook, give me, let, let them. Toto Bisha from Instagram, Daniel Fiseme, oh, Toto Bisha um, for Facebook, and um, Toto Bisha, it's about Twitter. Uh -huh. So when you type on the net, Toto Bisha or Daniel Fiseme, it's me. One and only. But everyone's Haitian who's watching, they know who you are. Thank you, Toto Bisha, I appreciate you. Yeah, it's a pleasure. <laughs> Kepeishan is yes. the place. I, I mentioned super, it's a superstar beach, Kada Beach. I ran into the one and only Cousin Jude. And of course, somehow, food is never, never near, never too far away from Cousin Jude. Brother, how are you doing, man? I'm good, man. What's going on with you? Oh, man, I'm enjoying this. I'm enjoying the vibe. I'm enjoying the water. Yes, what's up? Tell me, what, what's your, favorite, your favorite part about Okap so far? Okap, my favorite part has definitely been the vibe. The vibe in Okap is just genuine, it's pure, and it's safe. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. I've just been loving the vibe here. Nice. And you've been here a few days so far? I've been here for about five days so far. Yeah, it's not your first time in Okap. First time in Okap. About oh, wow. 20th time in Haiti. Though. Okay, okay, yeah. okay. And, and so Kaders Beach, where does it rank, you think, in, in terms of just other places you've been beach wise? Beach wise, yeah. I want to say maybe like top five. Top five? Okay, yeah. that's good. That's Top good. five. And, and, and most importantly, what do you think usually of our the cuisine in Haiti? What, the like, the cuisine, the you already know, the seafood yeah, yeah. is fresh out of the ocean fresh. and you know, cooked right there on the grill, so it's amazing. It's I'm, try, I'm trying to convince this cook spec to let Cousin Jude do his thing, but you know, it's definitely not about us. It's not going to happen. I got you. Cousin Jude, listen, thank you, brother. Go follow him. We're going to put his information down below. Go follow Cousin Jude. I appreciate it. I appreciate it. Guys, remember this from a from the first time we came to Cap, and when we were chilling with kids and hanging out. It's a little late in the day; the sun's just just about to set. Quite frankly, this might be the best time to come on the beach. <laughs> but Ilarat is a small little island. I mean, how many square feet is this? Man, it can't be more than three, four thousand, five thousand max square feet. Uh, it's really a spot, excursion spot for like cruise ships, stuff like that, to come out here. But quite frankly, it's a spot even for. You come in Okap, you can take a boat, come out here. It's a vibe, man. They, you know, for the whole around the you know, around the island, the water's crystal clear. I'm telling you, it is a spot that you just have to experience if you're here. We are just outside of Limbe, you know, and but in, in south of Okap, right? In this off the road beaten path area, which is really known as the heart and soul of the Kassav market here. And Kassav, for folks who don't know, looks just like this. It's a usually a square, bready material that comes from uh, Mayok, um, is the official term. It's kind of like a, 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 a yuca. Right, it's a potato that comes out the ground. It's a root. It's a very bitter root initially. Uh, and what they do is they'll go ahead. Let me show you something. What they'll, what they'll do is they'll make it become a powder, right? They'll make it into a, a, a flower, right? They, they mill it, right? They dry it initially as well, right? And then from there they'll go ahead and they pour it on that table. And as it gets hot, it hardens. And they'll put sugar and sesame seeds coconut, a bunch of different flavors into it, and then they, they'll flip it, right, of course, during the process, and then go ahead, and, and then really quick, within five, 10 minutes, you know, they'll, they'll make enough, uh, I mean, it'll be hot enough, it'll be pre prepped enough, and they take it to the table, and then once it gets to the table, what you see it, what you see is they'll go ahead and they'll cut it, like this is a big, this is a big board here, right, they'll go ahead and cut it, and then put lines into it, right, and then put it into a bag for, for consumption, right? And what's cool, and what's so cool, what you're gonna understand is where we're, where we're at right now, right now, you can go to hyperdistribution.com's website. Heck, you can go to amazon.com, and my company, right, the, a company that's bringing products out of Haiti to the US market, 
you can actually buy this same cassava. This same cassava I'm looking, I'm showing you right now. I'm holding it in my hands. We're br we bring it every single month by the container load to America and we sell it and you can buy it. Again, it's one of those things I'm proud of. I'm honest with you, like, cause we're, we're helping directly farmers. We're helping folks in this community, right? When we buy in large quantities. And of course, at the end of the day, it can only happen if you're buying it or you're, as you're watching it. So uh, the, the link will be in the bio of the video. Make it a point and buy your own, buy a couple, buy a dozen. <laughs> and I'm, trust me, it is so freaking delicious. Let me show you. Oh, and look at this. This is, it's a, cassava is so hard to describe. It's um, it's like a cracker, but it's a little softer. It's chewy, you know, and uh, I'm telling you, mine is good when it gets over there, but there's something else when it comes fresh off that hot, <laughs> hot stone. It's, some, it's a whole different flavor, a whole different experience, let me tell you. But, um, so if you're in the Okap, make it a point, come visit these, you know, these, these men and these women who are producing and buy it direct and take it home with you, take it on the plane, you can pull half a suitcase on this thing if, if needed. <laughs> or if you can't, come to Okap, buy it from uh, our, us, Simple Sign Sam brand, because we bring it from your doorstep through Amazon. technology developed uh, during uh, 2018 and the main objective is to encourage kids to use technology and to em embrace the STEM uh, field to develop their cognitive capacity and to help their community. We launch uh, the, the camp each summer in Cape Haitian and for Oppress. We teach the children uh, how to use the Arduino kit, uh, Sketch, the platform where we use uh, block programming to develop a video game and other program where, where the children can have fun. The program also helps them to develop the ability to use uh, technology and the other tools in the technology fields. Each, each summer we have different, uh, different group and different uh, children and different number. Uh, in this summer we have uh, 11 uh, kids where we help them to use the technology. Uh, in, in the summer also in PowerPress, we have uh, 50 kids and we teach them also the same field as uh, the children in Capetian. Specifically for the people who live in Capetian, uh, we want them to participate, not the parents but the children to participate in the summer camp because they will see the all the passion that the kids have in their life. And for the all community, we, if any of people can help us to have some materials or other uh, new technology to help these children, we are open for all of these things. Now we are, we are working to make books, video, we are working to make books, video, and other things for the children. We want you to collaborate with us to help us. If you are a developer, teacher, if you are someone who, who wants to help children to know technology, please contact us. You will be very, very good to help us learning the children technology. Pastor 
Isaac Albert. So I am pastoring a church here and we have uh, seven other churches affiliated to our mission here. And I've been living in America for uh, about 25 years and uh, now I felt call, God called me to return to Haiti and to play my role in my country. And uh, thank you for allowing me to be able to talk to you now. And uh, we are here to show you what we are doing here. It is our duty as uh, Haitian national to uh, take the initiative to start helping the country. It is our country. And uh, you know, there's a say uh, that say, uh, do not ask the country what it can do for you, but uh, ask yourself what you, you want to do, what you can do for your country. And uh, after living in America that long, and I felt like I need to be here and uh, minister to the people uh, in the church, but not only in the church, but uh, try to provide uh, uh, ends mean for the people. Uh, people need, need jobs, they need work. And we count a lot on tourism. It is important, tourism, but uh, we do not have much of it now in Haiti. And even though uh, there has to be national uh, uh, jobs, so that's why I was thinking of starting this, uh, uh, this business here to create uh, uh, this so people can uh, make uh, money, they can make uh, it can produce uh, so our national can use instead of just thinking of using clo use clothing like Pepe all the time it's you know it, it, I don't think Pepe is really helping so we need to do something so that's why we have started here to produce uh, anything that the national use that uh, we try to produce here so we are uh, glad to present it to you and uh, I'm hoping in the future you can see more and you can ask questions and we will be ready to answer your questions. Actually, we have 18 employees here and we are focusing now on uniform for, for LISE, for uh, government schools, um, because as uh, one of uh, LISE's members, uh, so I know how difficult it is uh, uh, for uh, students that go to LISE and they don't have much money and we try to provide them with their uniforms. Um, that's, that is our participation to, uh, to their education. And um, so we produce other things too and we will be producing other, uh, other uh, items too. But uh, for now we are focusing on uniforms uh, specifically uh, for this. Our goal is to enlarge and produce as much as possible whatever need the Haitian people have or anyone has, so we want to produce like uh, for wedding needs, uh, like uh, for school needs, like casuals and jobs and anything they need we can produce right here. And uh, so your order uh, to us uh, is a big help, that means you are helping to produce, to provide jobs for uh, our nationals, our Haitians. And um, we count on you and thank you very much for uh, your cooperation. Sir. But uh, whatever you need, just let us know and we would, we would do our best to produce it for you. the cop IEC episode and yes it's a, a telling that it's starting to drizzle a little bit in fact I thought my whole trip the forecast it had had it uh, raining and these tea storming and thunderstorming the entire time this is the first time in five days it's, it's actually raining thank goodness for the farmers I guess but <laughs> thank goodness for us too because it didn't rain until now it's a perfect way to end this yeah, yeah. we didn't have a, a a gray moment this entire time I can't recommend cop IEC enough from the people, the vibes, the partying, the energy. It's just a fantastic time. I highly recommend it. Make OCOP part of your must-to-do trip. There's so much history, so many things to do. Guys, if you like what we're doing here, please hit that like button, share, comment, 
this is what we like to do here at Sea Gentry. We like to show that different side, that different aspect of the country. Guys, do check out our other series. We've done Jack Mel, we've done Jeremy, you know, and we're gonna keep on doing this. We're gonna keep on doing this with your support, with your viewing it. We're gonna keep on going, right? Guys, we'll be back at it again. Or back at it again. Let me get out this ring. <laughs> Peace.